It's Paris's hottest week as this year's fall 2014 haute couture collections are rolling out and WSJ fashion reporter Christina Binkley is there soaking it all in. She joins us now from Paris to tell us more. Hi, Christina. Thanks for being with us. I know you have a busy schedule and have to run off to some more shows, so we won't keep you long. Well, you're right about soaking, by the way. Paris is raining, raining, raining the whole week. So I am soaking it all in, literally. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. But, but, Christina, do you see the Paris couture shows in general going through a bit of a transformation? <laughs> yes, a huge transformation. I think it was four years ago we were all wringing our hands saying haute couture was going to be a disappearing art. The schedules are so packed this week, it's hard to find time to breathe. It's not all haute couture. There's a lot of other people that are piling in, either aspiring couturiers or other brands that just want to get a little bit of space away from the, the busy ready-to-wear shows that start in September. All right, so let's talk a little bit about bridal. Are you seeing some interesting trends there? Yeah, what I don't know what happened to the white wedding dress. We're going in all different directions. You no, know, it's kind of it's actually really fun. I think what you know the wedding dress hasn't changed that much since 1890. But what we're seeing now is a lot of uh, I, you'd call it risk taking, but it's gorgeous dresses. Um, Javatista Valley had a a degradé dress. The, the skirt was of tulle that morphed from white into a hot yellow, and the top was uh, a silk pajama top. It was gorgeous. unusual, but. Uh, it looks beautiful. The pictures look beautiful. What were some other highlights of the, um, the Gian Battista Valli show? Well, you know, he, he actually has a, a crowd of the, the sort of Europe's and a few American aristocrats and, and does clothes that really fit their lifestyles. It was very graphic, and but, you know, he had the stripes that he mixed with a lot of flowers. I kind of wondered, there were so many flowers actually in his show that I wondered if this was a tribute to one of his best clients, Ulyana Sijenko, who is known to love uh, flowers. She's a, a Russian uh, uh, billionaire. Um, <laughs> you know, he he has a lot of dresses and a lot of, of, of clothing that is is absolutely for the jet set lifestyle. It's beautifully done. Not a bad idea to give your billionaire clients what they're looking for. Um, Christina, before we leave bridal, what did, did Chanel do anything interesting in the bridal realm? Uh, if you consider a pregnant bride interesting, yes. As a matter of fact, Carl Lagerfeld said after the show that he's done a lot of bridal, but he's never done pregnant, and that's what he wanted to. So he got <laughs> A pregnant model, Ashley Good, is an Australian model. She was very pregnant, just not a little pregnant. And the, the dress that she wore was actually made of the scuba material, ne ne neoprene. So it had this very 18th century shape. Gorgeous. But an ultra modern, spacey uh, a look to it because of the neoprene. Gorgeous look. At, you know, there are plenty of brides out there who are also, you know, carrying. So that's a good idea. All right. Anything it's else? modern. Yeah, that's right. Anything uh, from, the, uh, from the Chanel show, anything else you liked? You know, I liked the Bermuda shorts, and I don't think that everybody expects haute couture to do Bermuda shorts. I'm sure those shorts cost thousands of dollars, but they were made of tweed. They were very slim, and I thought, you know, everybody's wearing shorts these days, sometimes a little inappropriately, and these were just really fun, and they're kind of casual, dressy look that was great. Lovely. And what about the Scaparelli show? Did you have some uh, highlights there? Yeah, well, every look was a highlight in that show. Scaparelli, Elsa Scaparelli, who this brand is based on, was a, kind of surreal. She was a good friend of Salvador Dali, and her designs showed it. So the new designer, Marco Zanini, is sort of plumbing her mind and did things like gorgeous embroideries of a red bleeding heart on a black dress with arrows embroidered on it, sort of shooting at the heart. Wow. So there's a wink at, at what he looks at. Very outsized shape, huge 1940s shoulders. And before we leave, Christina, what about Dior? Dior was, uh, let's say, let's blast off. <laughs> this, was, <laughs> this was really a departure for Rafe Simons, the designer of Dior. He said he was is inspired by 18th century ball gowns and astronauts and cosmonauts. So if you can imagine putting those together, um, again, it's kind of spacey shapes made out of new materials, ball gown dresses shapes that, that were made out of materials that, I didn't see neoprene in this one, but it was sort of very shapely, um, um, sort of curvaceous bottoms with a T-tank top, for instance, that sort of blended modern and old. Um, he had coveralls in there that were sort of an homage to what astronauts wear when they're climbing on the on the rocket ship. Um, it, it was, it, it, for me, it didn't hold together like some of his previous collections. I, I kind of thought there were piecemeal pieces that were great, some wonderful coats that are probably going to sell um, to the to the ladies who can afford them, um, but as a whole, I've I've liked some of his previous collections more actually. All right, well, sounds great, Christina. Thank you so much for that. We know you have to rush off. What shows are you heading to now? I'm heading to V&A. All right, well, have fun. Thanks so much, Christina Binkley, for that. My pleasure.